if you consider any structure the strength and durability are super important however this can be achieved by using the good quality of materials the major materials in rcc structures are concrete and reinforcement when you consider the reinforcement the structural detailing is very important it is not only about the number of bars and the dia of bars there are also many other major factors are involving in structural detailing which helps to enhance the strength and durability of the structure hey friends welcome back to civil engineering mastery in this video we are going to discuss about the lapping zones in rcc beams why we have to lap the reinforced bars what is lap splices and how do we calculate the lapping length in rcc beams so without further delay let's begin now lapping zone refers to the region where overlapping of two bars are recommended for proper load transfer you can see from this picture here we have the lapping of two bars this is the region where we lap the bars okay so in this region we overlap the two bars to transfer the force safely from one bar to the another bar with the bonding of concrete so this zone we call it as a lap zone and the length we use for this is called the lap length this length of bar is there right? so this length we call it as a lap length in rcc beam lap zones differs for top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement we cannot do the lapping of bars in the same place in bottom reinforcement and top reinforcement there are many criterias we have to follow to choose the lapping zones in top and bottom reinforcement of beams why do we have this kind of lapping zones lapping of reinforcement is a common and necessary practice due to structural practical and economical reasons we have some of the factors to consider why we have to do this lapping of bars the first one is standard length limitation in india we have the length of bars up to 12 meter 12 meter length it's around 40 feet okay so if this is the standard length if we have the beam length more than this then we have to overlap the two bars for the continuity of the reinforcement this lapping of bars ensures the load transfer effectively between two bars this lapping maintains the tensile strength and structural integrity of the beam so if we use a single bar how we get the structural integrity and tensile strength in the similar manner if we do the lapping the lapping maintains that strength tensile strength and the structural integrity of the beam next one is economical and practical practically welding is an alternative to lapping but it is labor intensive expensive and need more skilled workers lapping is similar but faster and more cost effective making it ideal for most construction projects the last one is code compliance as per is code is 456 2000 and sp34 and we have the ductile detailing code is 13920 these codes allows lapping minimum lap length is typically 40 times the bar diameter or more depending on the bar size and location whether it is in the tension zone or in the compression zone when the load is applied on the beam you will be getting the bending moment like this in continuous beam here you will be getting the negative bending moment in the top and positive bending moment at bottom so the bending moment will be more over here near the support in the top of the beam and near the mid span at the bottom of the beam so due to this maximum bending moment will be having more stress in this zones so will not be providing the lapping of bars in these zones because the reinforcement bars will come out of concrete due to maximum stress in these zones so lapping of reinforcement bars in these zones are not allowed so in this case where we have to provide the lapping in top and bottom of beams in top 
we have to provide the lapping in this place so the main concept is we have to lap the bars where bending moment is less where we have the minimum stress okay so in the top we have to do the lapping over here here and here and in bottom we can do the lapping near the support so this is given in sp34 as well but this is for the case where we only have the gravity loads but when we consider the lateral load it is not great to lap the bars at the support in the bottom of beams because the lateral thrust will be acting at the column beam junction that tend to open up the rebar laps so is 13920 specify some criteria for lapping zones let's have a quick look into that the lap splices shall not be provided within joint this is the column beam junction and within a distance of 2d from the face of column and within quarter length of beam not more than 50% of area of steel bars on either top or bottom face shall be spliced at any one section so we have to follow these conditions when we consider the lateral loads the recommended zones for lapping it is in the middle third or mid span of the beam for top reinforcement and near the support not exactly at the face for bottom reinforcement and the places where we have to avoid the lapping is at the point of maximum stress and in zones of high bending moment why do we have these kind of different lapping zones for top reinforcement mid span which experience less tension so that is the safe for place to lap in bottom reinforcement near the support is under lower tension so that is the best place for lapping lapping in tension zones that is high moment regions can lead to the slippage of bar and failure if not done properly so this is why we have different lapping zones in beams so friends if you want calculation of lap length you can just comment in the comment box i will give you the separate video for that if you have any queries you can post it in the comment box your comments are always welcome i hope you all like this video please hit the like button and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos thank you for watching